Welcome back to another text adventure. This one is called Planetfall, originally called Soul Survivor until uh, Infocom found another game that was called Survivor, I think it was. So they changed it to Planetfall. Uh, apparently it's also got a mystery disease in it, just like the last game we played. Which, uh, for those of you watching VODs, um, Martian Gothic Unification, which takes place on a Mars base with a disease. Uh, see? Right then. Got the walkthrough there, which I shall probably need. I might have a go at it first. If I shall, I shall have a go at it first, see how far I get. And then we'll... Oh, moves. Oh, the fuck? It's interesting. I've got a bit of a bit of dirt on my glasses, which I just noticed looking at the moves thing, because it's in a perfect position to make it impossible to see it. There we go. It's been raining today. It's been absolutely chucking it down. It was ridiculous. Bright side, I did see it. Big old double rainbow on the way home. It looked beautiful. Uh, the inner ring was so bright that I could actually see it extending downwards. Which I assume is because it's a trick of the light. So it was actually refracting to the point where it appeared below the horizon. Which is very interesting. If you're me, and probably no one else, but there you go. Right, let's get into it then. Another routine day of drudgery aboard the stellar patrol ship Feinstein. Feinstein? Feinstein? This morning's assignment for a certain lowly Ensign 7th class, scrubbing the filthy metal deck at the port end of level 9. With your patrol issue self-contained multi-purpose all-weather scrub brush, you shine the floor with a diligence born of the knowledge that at any moment dreaded Ensign 1st class blather, the bane of your shipboard existence, could appear. Deck 9. This is a featureless corridor, similar to every other corridor on the ship. It curves away to the starboard, and a gangway leads up. To port is the entrance to one of the ship's primary escape pods. The pod bulkhead is closed. Uh, scrub the floor then, I guess. Just keep, I must fucking keep scrubbing the floor. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Again. 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 <clears throat> Am I going to get hungry? If I remember correctly, this uh, infocom, they're the ones that have you get hungry. Oh, what the fuck? The alien ambassador from the planet Blow Kibiben Gordo ambles towards you from down the corridor. He is munching on something resembling an enormous stalk of celery, and he leaves a trail of green slime on the deck, that bastard. He stops nearby, and you wince as a pool of slime begins forming beneath him on your newly polished deck. The ambassador wheezes loudly and hands you a brochure outlining his planet's major exports. Take your brochure. You already have it. The ambassador remarks that all humans look alike to him. <sighs> Insult ambassador. <laughs> ah. Hit ambassador. <laughs> the ambassador is startled and emits an amazing quantity of slime which spreads across the section of the deck you just polished. The ambassador asks where Admiral Smithers can be found. <laughs> Scrub deck. Again. The ambassador grunts a polite farewell and disappears up the gangway, leaving a trail of dripping slime. Again. <laughs> Again. 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 Oops, can't scrub in this fucking floor. This is a steep metal gangway connecting, connecting deck 8 above and deck 9 below. Oh. This is a featureless corridor leading port and starboard. A gangway leads down, and to four is the hyperspatial jump machinery room. Ensign Blather, his uniform immaculate, enters and notices you are away from your post. Twenty demerits, Ensign seventh class, seventh, seventh class, bellows Blather. Forty if you're not back on deck nine in five seconds. He curls his face into a hideous mask of disgust at your unbelievable negligence. Hit Blathers. <laughs> Blathers removes Blathers remove several of your appendages and internal organs. Fuck. <laughs> oh well, according to the Treaty of Gishin 4, signed in 8747GY, all adventure game players must be given another chance after dying, in interest of interstellar peace. I'd like to restart. Yes. That seems like a pain in the ass. But if I just go straight up, will you see me again? Immediately. Oh. Uh, inventory. A patrol issue, yeah, brush. Patrol uniform. 
kilometer. Drop uniform. Take off uniform. You have removed your patrol uniform. Removing your uniform while on duty, 500 demerits. <laughs> okay. Blather loses his last vestige of patience and drags you to the Feinstein's brig. He throws you in and the door clangs shut behind you. You are in the Feinstein's brig. Graffiti cover the walls. The cell door to the south is blocked. Is locked. You are empty handed. Okay. South. Scream. Scream. No. Scream. Again. 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 <laughs> Oh, I don't know what time it is, because I'm not going to be chromatic on. Wait. A massive explosion rocks the ship. Echoes from the explosion resound deafening down the halls. Ah, that's probably how we get down to the base. <laughs> that's probably the lone survivor part of lone survivor. You're supposed to be the one next to the escape pod, and not in the brig. <laughs> the ship shakes again. You hear from close by the sounds of emergency blockades closing. Uh, the ship rocks from the force of multiple explosions. The lights go out, and you feel a sudden drop in pressure accompanied by a loud hissing. Too bad you weren't in the escape pod. Let me start. Wait. Wait. Again. 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 Look at yell. This takes a while, doesn't it? Oh! The door to port slides open. Enter escape pod. This is one of the Feinstein's primary escape pods for use in extreme emergencies. A massive safety webbing, large enough to hold several dozen people, fills half the pod. The controls are entirely automated. The bulkhead leading out is open. Alright then. I'll just wait then. The pod door clangs shut as heavy explosions continue to buffet the Feinstein. You feel the pod begin to slide down its ejection tube as explosions shake the mothership. <clears throat> Through the viewport of the pod, you see the Feinstein dwindle as you head away. Bursts of light dot its hull. Suddenly, a huge explosion blows the Feinstein into tiny pieces, sending the escape pod tumbling away. You were thrown against the bulkhead, bruising a few limbs. The safety webbing might have offered a bit more protection. Ah, should I have gotten in? As the escape pod tumbles away from the former location of the Feinstein, its gyroscopes whine. The pod slowly stops tumbling. Lights on the control panel blink furiously as the autopilot searches for a reasonable destination. Okay, wait. And the auxiliary rockets... Oh, you should just read books on stream. <laughs> I did con consider it at one point. <laughs> I might as well. <laughs> Basically, I'm yeah. Hey, Cubic, how you doing? Oh dear. Make like all audio books. <laughs> too bad I, I slow my speech too much. I won't get away with it. <clears throat> yeah, just be do shit. The auxiliary rockets fire briefly, and a nearby planet swings into view through the port. It appears to be almost entirely ocean, with just a few visible islands and an unusually small polar ice cap. A moment later, the sun's the system's sun swings into view, and the viewport polarizes into a feature into a featureless black rectangle. Alright then. Wait. The main thrusters fire a long, gentle burst. The monotonic voice issues from the control panel. Approaching planet human habitable. Well, that's nice. Wait. 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 The pod is buffeted as it enters the planet's atmosphere. You feel the temperature begin to rise, and the pod's climate control system roars as it labours to compensate. Honestly, if you were just in space, I actually wonder how much the internal section would heat up. Because, like, when meteorites hit the Earth, they're very cold. They're still extremely cold from being in space. So, I don't know. The viewport suddenly becomes transparent again, giving you a full view of endless ocean below. The lights on the control panel flash, flash madly as the pod's computer searches for a suitable landing site. The thrusters fire long and hard, <laughs> slowing the pod's descent. The pod is now approaching the closer of a pair of islands. It appears to be surrounded by sheer cliffs rising from the water and is topped by a wide plateau. The plateau seems to be covered by a sprawling complex of buildings. Ah. Oh! The pod, whose automated controls were unfortunately designed by computer scientists, lands with a good deal of force. Your body sails across the pod until it's stopped by one of the sharper corners of the control panel. So I am supposed to actually engage with that mesh myself. Okay, I, I, I would have assumed. Oh well, never mind. Uh, wait. What the fuck? 
Oh, fuck off, Butter. I don't care. Butter, adding 50 more demerits for good measure, moves off in search of more young ensigns to terrorize. Bye, Bladder. So it is, I think that's actually random. Okay. Enter. Skip. Not skip. Pud. Um. What was it about? Massive safety webbing. Um. Enter webbing. <clears throat> you are now safely cushioned within the web. Okay, now we wait. Alright. Wait. Wait. So much waiting. Yes. The pod lands with a thud. Through the viewport you can see a rocky cleft and some water below. The, ro the pod rocks gently back and forth as if it were precariously balanced. A previously unseen panel slides open, revealing some emergency provisions, including a survival kit and a towel. Can I save? Failed. Shit. Uh, take all. Oh, exit webbing. As you stand, the pod shifts slightly and you feel it falling. A moment later, the fall stops with a shock and you see water rising past the viewport. Oh dear, take all. Uh, hmm. Shit. Right, so I can open it. Talent survival kit. Examine survival kit. Is there a raft? The pod is now completely submerged. You feel it smash against underwater rocks. Bubbles streaming upwards past the window indicate that the pod is continuing to escape. Okay. Um, open door. The bulkhead opens and cold ocean water rushes in. Exit pod. You are momentarily disoriented as you enter the turbulent waters. Currents buffet you against the sharp rocks of an underwater cliff. Ow. A dim light filters down from above. Oh. Crack. <coughs> Greg. You have reached a cleft in the cliff wall where the island rises from the water. The edge of the cleft displays recently exposed rock where it collapsed under the weight of the escape pod. About two metres below, turbulent waters swirl against sharp rocks. A small structure clings to the face of the cliff about eight metres above you. Even an out-of-shape ensign at seventh class could probably climb up to it. Well, then, oh. Balcony. This is an octagonal room, half carved into and half built out from the cliff wall. Through the shattered windows which ring the outer wall, you can see ocean to the horizon. A weathered metal plaque with barely readable lettering rests below the windows. The language seems to be cor a corrupt form of... Galalingua. Whatever that means. A steep stairway, roughly cut into the face of the cliff, leads upwards. A rocky crag can be seen about 80 metres below. Well, up again. Wait, can I read? Read the plaque? <clears throat> ah. Scenic Vista. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. Right, okay. The stunning view of the Calamonte Valley covers over 40 square miles of that famous tourist spot. The large building at the bend in the Gulman River is the former provincial capital building. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> That's, that's fucking terrible. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. That's fucking... I hate that so much. Okay, oh. Winding stair. The middle of a long, steep stairway carved into the face of a cliff. Well, keep going there. Why would you stop me in the middle? Courtyard. You're in the courtyard of an ancient stone edifice, vaguely reminiscent of the castles you saw during your leave on Ramos II. It has decayed to the point where it can probably be termed a ruin. Openings lead north and west, and a stairway downward is visible to the south. All right then, well, let's go north. Plain hall. This is a featureless hall leading north and south. Although the hallway is old and dusty, the construction is of a much more modern style than the castle to the south. A similar hall branches off to the northeast. Northeast. Rec corridor. This is a wide east-west hallway. Portals lead north and south, and another corridor branches southwest. Can I go through a portal to the north? Dawn B. This is a very long room lined with multi-tiered bunks. Flimsy partitions between the tiers have been provided um, have provided a modicum of privacy. These Spartan living quarters could once could have once housed many hundreds, but it seems quite deserted now. There are openings at the north and south ends of the room. What's at the north? Sanfactu, Sanfactu, rather. 
This must be the sanitary facility for the adjacent dormitory. The fixtures are dry and dusty, the room dead and deserted. You marvel at how little the millennia and cultural gulfs have changed toilet bowl design. The only exit is south. Okay, south, south, south. Dorm A. This is quite a this is a very long room lined with multi tiered bunks. Flimsy partition between the tiers and providing the bottom security. Yes, 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 yes. South again. And nothing in here either. Right. Uh, east. Mescorolor. This is a wide east-west hallway with a large portal to the south. A small door to the north is closed and hooked with sim with a simple steel padlock, which is also closed. Best hall. This is a large hall lined with tables and benches. An opening to the north leads back to the corridor. A door to the south is closed. Next to the door is a small slot. Although the room is quite barren, an octagonally shaped canteen is sitting on one of the benches. Take all. <clears throat> I now have a canteen. I need water. Open. Help, Scott. Hi, China. How you doing? Help with what? It's just an opening. Well, you said it was closed, though. A door to the south is closed. Oh, open south door. Did you mean to say hello? I accidentally cl clenched my fist. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and I have a cramp, therefore I cannot relax my grip. Um, What's the... What's the advice of cramps? Uh, warm it? Is it warm it? You're supposed to warm it, aren't you? Um, have you got a hot water bottle? <laughs> Run it under a hot tap. <laughs> but not too hot. You're supposed to warm it, not heat it. <laughs> not cook it. <clears throat> um, you dead man fisted it. Dead man. What are your thoughts on, thoughts on copium? Uh, depends on how severe the copium is. Like, if it's... Mild copium, then a, a little bit of mild copium is fine, but uh, if, you're, if you're going hard copium constantly, then uh, you need to sort it out. Uh, so basically, my thoughts on copium are the same as my thoughts on opium. It, in small doses, uh, for its intended purpose, that's fine. Uh, in large do doses, not so good. We are neck deep in that shit. Oh, constantly. Always. The world is shit. <laughs> we just need to keep going. Not neck deep. Eh. <laughs> Still to my nostrils. Oh, I can't breathe. Oh dear. <laughs> Having trouble over there. <clears throat> are you supposed to huff? Are you supposed to breathe in copium? If it's up to my nostrils, if it's up to your nostrils, <laughs> just breathe it in. Breathe it in. <laughs> you, the game, game. You told me there was a door to the south. Got so much, I'm drowning in it. Checks out. Checks out. Copium is addictive, it is. We'll take all of you. <laughs> How do we get copium to relax its grip? <laughs> we need answers, we do. <laughs> you want answers? I want the truth! <laughs> Oh dear. Oh no, okay. Let's go back north and east again. Dom Corridor. This is a wide east waste hallway with openings to the north and south. The east a corridor stretches off into the distance. That section of the hallway is lined with a motorized walkway. That was probably intended to transport people or cargo to that tremendously long hall. East. For a long time, but finally you've seen an intersection ahead. Corridor Junction. A north south corridor intersects the main corridor here to the west. The main corridor extends as far as you can see. A non-working walkway from that direction ends here. To the east, the corridor winds into a well-lit area. How do we change the hopium, or does it not exist? Um. Hmm. I don't think you can get hopium. I think you have to generate it yourself, unfortunately. I don't think it's something that you can just... It's not as easy to gain as copium. Copium is far easier to gain than hopium. Copium is a response. Hopium, like, hopium is the prevention, whereas copium is the cure. <laughs> but an ounce of hopium is much more difficult to come by than a pound of copium. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Just. Things will get better. You just have, you have to believe it. Copium is a commodity. <laughs> copium is a necessity. Uh. Hopium is a commodity. Hopium is a luxury good. <laughs> a luxury item. Hopium is what the plebs get. Oh dear. 
Hopium presents itself when it is needed, not when it is wanted. <laughs> and sometimes not even that. I think Hopium, hopium is extremely fickle. Um, hmm. My suggestion would be to do something. Anything. Just pick a thing and do it. Uh, just prove yourself that you can do something. Uh, when I was at university, which was a mistake. <laughs> Hell, currently I must have streamers on Twitch. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Possible. It is not helping. No, no, I mean, like, do something productive. <laughs> no, no, like, not just anything. <laughs> like, crack cocaine is also something you could do. I'm not suggesting you do that. <laughs> um, like, when I was at uni, I was I was not having a good, good time with things. Uh, I wrote a book. I wrote a book. It is over 200,000 words long. Um, maybe don't go that far. I'll try crack. <laughs> no. I said no. I won't, I won't say write over 200,000 words, but if you could plan a story, Bookium was not what I asked for. Listen, Bookium can lead to Hopium, okay? If you can plan a thing out, like a productive thing, something that actually creates something or does something useful for yourself or other people, if you can plan it out, commit to it, and complete it, then you will feel better about yourself. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's something that's either useful or just, what, just something that's good. Creative or useful. Just... I want it now. No. No. The fact that you want it now <laughs> is part of the problem. Instant gratification is not a good thing. <laughs> you want instant You want instant grat gratification. Go have a wank. Deferred gratification. That's the best thing for you. <laughs> Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> what the, the crack. <clears throat> this is a wide, brightly lit lobby. A blue metal door to the north is closed, and a larger red metal door to the south is also closed. Beside the blue door is a blue button, and beside the red door is a red button. The corridor leads to west to the east. is a small room about the size of a telephone booth. But I'm already wanking three times a day. <laughs> you can't check your lit copium out. That shit stays in your system. <laughs> No, no, listen. Masturbation is also copium. <laughs> you have to understand this. Masturbation is copium that you're not getting sex. <laughs> That's what masturbation is. <laughs> it's the other addiction I'm fighting, Jesus. We've <laughs> got copium. <laughs> copium, crack cocaine, masturbation. What's next? <laughs> it's got speaking facts. I always speak facts. <laughs> Which is a lie. <laughs> Man's not speaking English, he speaks facts. <laughs> Indeed. I speak the language of the truth. Oh dear. <clears throat> I'll buy a pillow cake. That'll do it if you can find some. <laughs> Although that is also instant gratification. That'll also solve it. Oh, you're gonna go for the instant gratification of food. <laughs> of sugary substances. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Oh, no. <clears throat> Booth 2. This is a tiny room with a large 2 painted on the wall. The panel contains a slot about 10 centimeters wide, a brown button labelled 1, and a tan button labelled 3. We'll lace it with crack. <laughs> well, what can I say to that? <laughs> okay, so we've got what? Copium. Crack cocaine. I wanted to dry wall but I got cocaine from the dealer. <laughs> I mean, could it work as drywall? I don't know. Do you? Have you tried it? <laughs> Have you attempted? <laughs> can we... <laughs> can we... <laughs> can we just, just try and make a wall out of cocaine? <laughs> I mean, it does come in bricks. <laughs> Sorry, this is Copium Chat only. No. <laughs> Hopium stream is tomorrow, indeed. Well... After this, we're playing Curse of Monkey Island, which is, um, from what I've heard, is the start of the uh, down, the, the downward spiral of uh, <laughs> Monkey Island. So maybe not tomorrow. Oh dear, <clears throat> I don't actually know what comes after that. In fact, I, I've got my internet open. I've got my internet open to play this. Let's have a look. Downward spiral. I say cope, not see. <laughs> Let me see if I can bring up the list because I've got my internet open to get this open. So let's see if I can bring up the list. Let's see. Let's see if we've got anything, anything that should be fun coming up. 
what have we got? Okay, it's from Curse of Mankind, then after that it's another text adventure. And then after that it's Necronomicon The Dawning of Darkness, which is not the one that you recommended to me. I think it was you, wasn't it, Teenage? Um, but I, I think it's another Evil Dead one. I mean, it's called Necronomicon. After that's The Witness, which is an, the 1983 text adventure, not the recent one. Then after that is Nox, which I don't know what that is. Titan Empire, ah, and then Sacrifice. We're playing Sacrifice soon, relatively soon. That should be fun. Uh, Sacrifice is an RTS. It's apparently a very unique RTS that people tend, that everyone who's played it seems to like. So, the PS2 one was Regeneration. I think that's what you told me. Yeah. It, I've got it on the list somewhere, just not coming up in the list. Um, if it's a PS2 exclusive, then I won't be able to play it until I've got a better computer that'll be able to emulate it properly without janking the fuck out. Because... <laughs> I can put up a jank. Personally, I'm, I'm happy to put up a jank. Uh, for the stream, I'd like to avoid it. <laughs> uh, let's push